Please do not play with matches, lighters, candles or fire. Leave it to grown-ups. All of the fire and flashes that you will see in this assembly are done in a safe environment. Please do not attempt to copy them. The Events of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2 When the day of Pentecost came, all the disciples were together in one room. Suddenly a sound like a blowing wind came from heaven and shook the house, and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire coming to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. Now there were lots of people staying in Jerusalem at that time, and when they heard the sound, a crowd gathered together and each person heard them speaking in their own language. The people were amazed and said, Aren't these people Galileans? How is it that we hear our own languages? We're from all over the place, some near, some far. Some of us are Jews and some Greeks. Some of us are Egyptians and some Arabs. They were amazed and said, What does this mean? Others weren't so sure and made fun of them. You've had too much wine to drink, they said. Then Peter stood up with the other disciples and addressed the crowd. Listen to me, all you here in Jerusalem. It's too early to be drunk. This is what God promised long ago. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. On my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Peter explained about Jesus' death and resurrection. He told them how God had been at work on this plan since long ago. Be sure of this, he said, God has made Jesus, who you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were upset and said, What should we do? Peter said, Repent and be baptised in Jesus' name for forgiveness, and you will receive the Holy Spirit too. This great promise is for everyone. And that day loads and loads of people believed and were baptised. And the church grew. Hello everyone. I hope you're all well and keeping safe. Uh, I know lockdown rules are easing slowly, so things are getting a little bit back to normal. You don't have to wear masks as much in school, I believe. Um, but you still need to keep to the rules so we all keep safe. Uh, did you like that uh, Lego story about Pentecost? I love the story of Pentecost. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, the room that's behind me um, is a mock-up of the room that the disciples would have been hiding in at Pentecost before they came out fill, filled with the Holy Spirit. So it would have been like this. It would have been much the same as where Jesus had had his Last Supper with his disciples. So Pentecost is a wonderful story. The um, Holy Spirit comes and the Holy Spirit gives the gift of life and love and all the help and support that we need in our life. So we ask the Holy Spirit to come to us every time at Pentecost and we hope that the Holy Spirit will come like a tongue of fire. Oh, what was that? Oh, we'll have to see a little bit about more about that later. Uh, we're going to have a song now and then I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, Pentecost. Then the spirit came, blowing wind in tongues of flame, and everything was changed. Gathered in an upstairs room, where Jesus' friends together. But when the wind began to blow, it wasn't just the weather. God's Holy Spirit filled that place. Turn into tongues of every nation. Jesus' friends can speak them all without an education. It was the feast of Pentecost. So Jews from every land were gathered in Jerusalem. They didn't understand God's Holy Spirit. Let's 
somehow they can speak To each of us in our own tongues in Latin, French and Greek And one man not so courteous said, this is what I think That babbling, they make no sense, they've had too much to drink So Peter stood and told the crowd, these men are sober friends God promised this, it's coming for the spirit that he sends The prophet Joel told us when one day we dream dreams Men and women, old and young, that day has come It seems for God's own spirit falls on So welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that song. Now, the story of Pentecost is a wonderful story, as I've said. I'm still here in the upper room and the disciples were waiting to see what Jesus was going to send them. And so all of a sudden a wind arose and came through the room. Uh, we're told this is God's Holy Spirit telling the disciples that they need to go and outside to receive what God is going to give them. So they go outside. And everybody in the crowd is watching them because they've all been waiting for them to come outside to see what Jesus was going to leave them. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, like tongues of fire, appeared above each of their heads. And I've got some what magicians use to create flashes. Uh, and I'm going to use that to illustrate what happened. So we have a flash of flame that went above each of the disciples' heads. So there were 12 disciples, so there were 12 flashes. So the first one we have is Peter. So Peter is the leader. So he is the first to receive God's Holy Spirit. And then Andrew. Then John. Oh, that was a good one. And then Andrew's brother, Philip. And then James. And then Thomas. I like Thomas. Thomas is a good character in the Bible. Then Matthew. And then Bartholomew, although I couldn't spell that out on the paper, it was too small. So we've got Bartholomew next to receive the Holy Spirit. And then there's another James, another James. Then a strange name, Thaddeus. Then Simon.
And then finally, the new disciple, Matthias. Because if you remember in the story, Judas betrays Jesus. So he's thrown out of being an apostle. So they replace him. They all vote for a man called Matthias. So Matthias is the last one who receives God's Holy Spirit. And so they all receive God's Spirit. And everybody sees that the Spirit of God comes upon these apostles. And with anyone who is baptized in God's Spirit can be a part of this wonderful gift. And to tell everybody about this, because Jerusalem had lots of pilgrims in them, lots of people visiting. They all came from different countries and spoke different languages. So what does God do? He gives the disciples the gifts so that, so that they can speak to everybody in their own tongue. And everybody is amazed. And some people think they're actually uh, drunk or mad. But no, God just gives them that ability so they can tell them about this gift that God has given them. And then they go away and they tell everybody. And lots of people are baptized and become part of this new movement, this new church that Jesus has created. And so this is the fulfillment of all our Easter story. And we uh, give thanks to God for that. So we're going to have a, another Pentecost song now, and then we'll finish with our prayers. The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the Spirit's not a banana. You wanna be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love and joy, peace, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love and joy, peace, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. If you want to be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the Spirit's not a cherry. If you want to be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay, everybody knows that grapes come in bunches, so everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the Spirit's not a grape. The fruit of the Spirit's not a grape. You want to be a grape? You might as well hear it You can't be a fruit of the Spirit Cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control Love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that song. Uh, as you can see behind me now, we've got a firework display going on. Um, fireworks are very much like the Holy Spirit that came to the uh, disciples on uh, Pentecost. They're bright and they're like flames of fire above our heads. Uh, so I thought that would be uh, an appropriate uh, background for this final part of our assembly. So let us pray. Heavenly God, we give you thanks for the Holy Spirit, for the gift that you gave us, the gift that sustains us and keeps us, the gift that helps us and supports us in all that we do. But we also pray, Lord, for all those people that support us in all that we do, for our friends and our teachers here at school, for all those who work here. We pray for our 
mums and dads, nans and granddads, brothers and sisters, aunties, uncles, all those who are a part of our life. And we pray, Lord, that you will be with us in all that we do, that you will help us to learn, that you will help us to be the best people we can in our school community and at home. And we pray, Lord, that your spirit will give us this strength, that it will guide us and that it will come upon us as at Pentecost and show us all the things we need to do that are right. And so we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And we give you thanks, Lord. Amen. So I hope you have a, a good rest of the week uh, and keep safe. I know we can uh, meet more people outside and, and in our homes now. So uh, hopefully you'll you'll get to see somebody. Maybe you've hugged your uh, your nanny or your granddad for the first time in a long time. That would be good. So uh, keep safe. Keep well. Don't mess with fire. Um, matches, lighters, anything like that. Just don't mess with them. Leave it to the adults and keep safe and keep well. God bless. Bye. See you soon.